Welcome to day 26. We are almost a month into our devotion. So let's go ahead and get started and have a moment of prayer. Most gracious Father, we come before you thanking you, Lord God, for being a God in the midst. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the hearts of understanding that you have allowed for us to have. We thank you, Lord God, for the ears and the eyes of revelation that you have allowed us to see and hear. And Father, we ask, Lord God, that as we continue to learn and to devote our time to you, that Father, you will remember us forever in Jesus' name. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you will uh, come in and continue, Lord God, to remove any hindrances and distractions that may keep us from this word. Father, I pray, Lord God, that this word will take root into our hearts, into our spirits, that will grow a harvest, Lord God, that as you said in your word, that will abide in us, Lord God, and that will bear much fruit. Father, we bless you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. All right, so for today, our reading, um, go ahead and finish out uh, Genesis at your own time. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move to the next book, which is the book of Exodus. And I'm moving forward because I want to, uh, number one, keep up with uh, the devotion that we have. And number two, I think this is a good point for us to kind of uh, go out of order, if you will. We don't have to um, make this book the blueprint of what we do. Um because the truth be told is that as I'm reading it, God has given me a different understanding, allowing me to say something different from the book. So uh, I praise God that um, that he has infinite knowledge and wisdom that we don't have to worry about copyright infringement. Amen. Amen. So um, our next reading is Exodus chapter one, verse one through chapter three verse 22, and then Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 35. So Exodus, um, the meaning of the word Exodus, if you look at the prefix ex, and we all know that it means outside, to go outside. Anything that is external, anything that is extrinsic, Anything that is um, with an EX, it means out. So the book of Exodus literally means to leave, to exit. The book of Exodus talks about how the people, the chosen people of God, were on a mass exit from slavery. So how did this happen? How did the Israelites... Um, come to be in this situation? Well, we know that, that Joseph was um, in the Egyptian uh, country and he, he took care of a lot of things. Well, as you know, whenever you have a legacy and if you don't keep passing down the legacy and someone kind of drops what happens, then the future generations will not remember the, a very prominent historical figure, um, just like, um, for example, Martin Luther King. I mean, we hear about him, but there will be generations, unfortunately, that if we're not careful, they won't even really even know who he is. And there are some now, unfortunately, that don't even know who he is because the legacy was not carried forth. They know that we have the holiday off, praise God. But to really know what he did and to know what he stood for, and they just don't know. So here is um, an Egyptian pharaoh that really don't remember, don't remember who Joseph is. But he did have a little idea of who uh, Joseph was. And so he took that little idea and instead of honor it, it became for him intimidation and a threat. And so he figured, okay, if this Joseph is as powerful, as, as is as anointed, has this God that is following him, then I don't want his people to think that they are um, such a much and will take over. And so let's, let's enslave them. Let's enslave them and they will work as our slaves and 
they won't rise up because their leader who they had is no longer here. So that's what happened. The Egyptians enslaved the Israelites. God rose up a man, um, Moses, ironically, um, in the same sort of situation. Whereas Joseph was given to the Egyptians um, instead of uh, being killed in a cruel way, Moses was given to the Egyptians to keep from being killed in a good way. His mother did not want him to be um, slaughtered in this mass, this mass, mass uh, murder that was going on with with baby boys. And so his mother um, stepped out on faith and, and put him in a situation where uh, where an Egyptian um, princess could could find could find Pharaoh uh, could find sorry could find Moses and take him as her own. So you read the story and, and get the other details of that. But I just want to kind of bring that that together of how again God will take a negative situation, He'll turn it around for good for His purpose, only for His purpose. So here we have um, Moses has now grown up. Moses has now. Um, done some things and he um, wants to leave Egypt and go to his people, go to the Israelites, go to his his founding, his, his fathers, his family. And God chooses him to lead uh, the Israelites out of Egypt in a number of ways. And God reveals himself to Moses in a very different way that he revealed himself to Joseph. He revealed himself to Joseph through dreams and, and promises. But he reveals himself to Moses as uh, the great I am in a very visual, visual manifestation of who he is by the infamous burning bush, the bush that burned but was not burned if you understand the bush that was on fire was not consumed in fire and turned to ashes. It was just a perpetual, uh, an, an undeniable, but un understandable way of burning. And God chose Moses to lead the Israelites to freedom as, as God coming in as the, I am to lead them away from the um, shackles of slavery of the Egyptians to set them free to worship and praise and to live for him. Amen. The book of Exodus is not only a historical book that we talk about the Red Sea and all those miraculous things that happen, but that is also a, um, a preview, if you will, a prelude to what God did, does for us. He reveals himself to us as the great I am. And he sent his son Jesus to do the same thing, to come down and rescue us from the shackles of sin. So how did sin, just like Pharaoh was intimidated by the people of God, so is the enemy. And this is a, a wonderful revelation that I pray empowers you, that the enemy is intimidated by the people of God, by the children of God. That he he understands that if they have an understanding of who they are, they may uprise, they may uprise and be victorious. And so what does the enemy do? He sends all these different things to shackle us in sin, to shackle us in things that will not profit us in the end to entice us to do things that we ought not to do that will keep us bound to what he would have us to do so that we never understand who we truly are and we never become who God intended for us to be and will never go for where God prepared for us to be forever. And so Jesus is the way, is the truth, is the light that will come in as we accept him, as we accept the father, as we accept all the teachings of Christ, 
that would do as Moses did, even greater than Moses, and lead us into eternal salvation, into eternal freedom. For the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And so I want you to no longer look at the book of Exodus as Old Testament, as um, something that happened a long, long time ago. I want you to understand that God wrote the Bible as one continuous story. And whatever is in the Old Testament through the various individuals was all wrapped and put into Jesus. And was done better because it was himself. So let me say it again. Everything in the Old Testament, all the individuals, and the prophets and prophets and prophetess and, and kings that he used and queens that he used. The individuals that he used, all of that was put all into Christ. Better, best. Good, better, best in Christ. Matter of fact, the Bible even talks about in the, the book of Hebrew that the name of Christ is above the name of Moses. It is above that name. And Moses did some great, great things, some great things. But God said, because it's me, because it's my son, it's, it's better than that. It's better than that. And that's why he is the only way to the father. Because he's a part, he's an extension of the father. He has the power. He is God. That's the only way. And so just like the people of Israel, Israel had to go through their own trials and tribulations, they had to find their way in the wilderness. They had to latch on to the teachings of Moses. They had to understand that God was the I am. We had to, they had to exit from, from their captivity enslaved with the Egyptians. So too must we do our own part to grab onto Christ to be released from the bondages of sin and grab on to everlasting life. And so I want you to see that slavery to sin, doing anything contrary to the word of God is a plan and a trick of the enemy and holding on to Christ, no matter how difficult or no matter how much you don't understand, whatever could come up in your mind, whatever it is for you, it is for your good to dismiss all of that and to hold on to your only way to a forever. To your only way to everlasting life. To your only way to being with God. To your only way to heaven. Anything else is unfruitful, unproductive. And will never last. And it will end, it will end for you an ending that we would not wish on our worst enemy. And so I pray that you have been blessed by this. I pray that you will, in your own time, catch up with Genesis and, and finish out that book, but then really look at Exodus with a whole new set of eyes to see that Exodus then was a preparation for Christ to come in to bring you out of your own exodus situation so that you can have an exit out of sin and an entrance into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Most gracious Father, we come before you thanking you, Lord God, for this day. Thanking you, Lord God, that you had a plan before the plan that was executed came to pass, Father. Father, we thank you for the exit plan that you gave us, Lord God, through your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that we will come to the knowledge of Christ with a new understanding, with a new revelation, and hold on, Lord God, to our exit plan that you designed for us so that we may enter into your kingdom forever. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. And see you next time.